Wack coming at you from the back. And on Skype still, Grant Loftus. Uh, hello, hello. All right, so we're going to get right into it this time, because uh, we just recorded that weird-ass fucking debate thing that'll go up as a supplemental to this. Uh, first off, the Nintendo NX probably getting debuted tomorrow at $300 is the rumored price. 9 a.m. Central Time. 9 a.m. Central Time, Friday, October 21st. So I guess that's uh, not tomorrow, or it might be tomorrow when you're listening to this. Because uh, it's Wednesday right now. I thought it was Thursday morning. It's tomorrow morning. Uh, this, this is saying the 21st. So 20th, 21st. Tomorrow. We will see. Uh, well, it'll happen. It'll happen sometime this week. Fucking finally. I have no fuck. I have no expect. I mean, you'd think after like ha- hearing about it, but not hearing about it for so long, you'd have all this hype. I just have no uh, expectations for it. Like, it'll be a new Nintendo console. All I want is it for it to be backwards compatible with both 3DS and Wii U games. And if it is, that would be so awesome. Sold, and yeah, yeah. I will buy this thing fucking day one. I will use my new egg credit card. I will buy it with no interest, pay it off over a year, and fucking it'll be great. What I'm else would we want it to be? What else do we uh, want? I, it, want I, mean... it, I want it to be the hybrid console handheld thing. I want it to be like maybe just as powerful as like the regular PS4, Xbox One. It doesn't have to be more because uh, like Nintendo doesn't need that. I want like. I just want my old games to work on it, basically. That's what I'm yeah. I want. My old shit to work. Because, if, because then that way um, they can still like kind of salvage the Wii U. Um, like it cannot be a total waste, you know. Because then people can still play those games they may be curious about, but they just need to buy the new console. But yeah, they they absolutely like, need to like do like tr- like triple what they've been doing because what they've been doing has basically been nothing. Nintendo, like in my opinion. My, I will say that like. Yeah, the Wii U is still new to me, even though I probably bought mine a year or two ago. Just, or no, definitely like. I think we got ago. ours like about the same time. I think yeah, yours a little bit before I got uh, mine. I think like it was Black Friday, twenty thirteen or twenty fourteen or something. Whenever it was the Black Friday that it came out, um, because and like the and like I have a lot of games for it, but like the only games I've played on it have been like Smash Brothers, Mario Kart Eight. Uh, Mario Maker and Splatoon. The only third-party oh, game I've yeah, the only third-party game I've played on mine has been Bayonetta. The only game I bought mine for specifically, I ended up selling before I played like more than like five hours, which was that Xeno, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X game, which I love the oh, one. Oh no, no, I lied. Uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions is another because uh, you brought up Xenoblade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Tokyo Massage Sessions is another game. Yeah, yeah, Xenoblade yeah, Chronicles is great, but. Ugh, the X one is I don't know. It's really gorgeous. It's amazing looking, but that's about it. I gotta, well, uh, I gotta we'll we'll talk about this more next week after it gets announced. I think. Uh, so let's uh, let's move on already. Cause... But it looks like uh, then like the next Zelda game is definitely like it's it's gonna be the GTA five thing. Of, like, yeah. I buy it now when you can wait and get it on the next. Console. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I will get it on the next thing unless the next thing looks terrible. It's so weird. Reason. Like okay, this at least the at least the uh, Wii U came out with like here's a Donkey Kong game and here's like I think it had some like you know other first party things like Kirby and and Yoshi and stuff like pretty early on. Actually, a Yoshi game came out last year, so never mind. But it introduced a new IP. But I feel like. At least the Wii, it seemed like it took, you know, it was like seven years, and then it finally got, here's a Donkey Kong game, here's a Zelda game, here's a Metroid game, or whatever. Um, Hopefully the NX is, like, pretty generous when it comes out with having a lot of uh, new party stuff. It's like the Star Fox game came out this year, and, like... Yeah, but that game was shit. The new Zelda game. You know, the main main characters on uh, Smash Brothers, like, should have games pretty much right away well there's well there is a there is a rumor out there right now and i guess this is also news which i'm really excited about is that beyond good evil 2 is going to be one of the exclusive games for it which would be be pretty cool yeah i mean if that's true which i don't think it's going to be i think that game is going to be multi-platform that would be a day one buy for me i would buy that thing I will pre-order it tomorrow if I have to own a. Uh, I I have Beyond Good and Evil because it was it's free, free right now. Xbox. Yeah. It's free yeah, right now on PC. I... If you go on, oh, on Ubisoft, yeah, this month it's free, oh, nice. or maybe this week. Oh, I'll grab so. it there then too. You have to use yeah, their weird like, program. I, I just never played. I have it on Xbox because I uh, I never like I, I've never played it though. It's one of the most underrated games of uh, of ever, I think. Yeah, the people who like that game seem to really like it. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, moving on. 
game news. Red Dead Redemption 2 confirmed. It's going to be out in about a year from now. I feel this game in my bones. I need this game. Red Dead Redemption, the first, was my favorite game of the entire previous generation. Like, and that's including, like, GTA V. Like, I need it. I need it now. A year is too long. I want it. I want it so much. Yeah. I mean, I absolutely Please agree with you. Please give it to you. me, Rockstar. Well, <laughs> I am open. they're giving I, it to my you. My body is ready. They're giving it to you, and I, I think it's going to be huge when it comes out. Um, just, I mean, look at this. Trailer tomorrow for that game. Oh, I forgot. That's right. It's tomorrow. Uh, I think we can. I think we could speculate on a lot of things just based on the image they've shown, which is just a silhouette of seven characters. Um, also, a lot of people have pointed something out here. Uh, there are characters in the silhouette. If you zoom up really close, one looks like Bill Williamson. One looks like yeah, John yeah, that's, Marston. That's my- yeah, that's my guess. Is that's your gang, and it's going to be a prequel to the first one. And you get to literally play as John Marston, which well, again, who knows? Maybe you'll play as a different member of the gang. I think you're going to play as all seven character. of the. I think you're going to play as all seven of these characters, and I that's going to be. I don't think they're going to give you all seven. I I think at most they'll give you three or four, like GTA Five had. I think seven is too much. Well, maybe. I mean, it's obviously a very. It'd be a. It'd be a lot maybe of characters. Swap between them really fast, like uh, the Lego games. Because, I mean, if you're always doing different things, always playing as different characters, yes, it's going to be a lot but they have to, to come up, Yeah, they have to come up with seven different, like, gimmicks for each of them that, like, only one can do. And that seems like too much to ask for. I don't see any female characters in this, which is interesting. But I guess there was no po- in their posse in the... Yeah. Yeah. So it's My not... guess is you'll probably be able to play as a lady in the online, because the rumor is they're going even, like, harder with the online in this than they did GTA V. Because GTA Online was apparently like super fucking successful for them. Mm-hmm. It's one of the reasons this game didn't get announced till now, is because they didn't have to work on any deadlines because they had this constant revenue stream. So they didn't have to reveal this till they were like done with it, basically. Mm-hmm. Which is awesome. I mean, That's cool. if Which this is game, how all games should be made. Yes. Holy fuck. If this game comes out this year, that's insane. But I don't uh, think it will. 2017. They've said fall 20. It's on that teaser, which fall 2017. Fall 2017. Game. This whole year. I mean, unless man. unless it's actually like really close to being like not finished per se, but it's like mostly done. That's great. I mean, because if you, yeah. I mean, if they're not even close to done, then they should not even have said anything about the release date. Um, because with the way games are nowadays, and everybody gets so upset about these delays, and. That's just the nature of games these days. They're so big, and they're, they're, uh, the, to make them, it's so much bigger. Like, I was listening to this podcast, and they were talking about Amy Hennig. The, she's, like, the lead, one of the lead designers of, uh, of Uncharted. And she said she was working 80 hours a week, like, every day of the year. I mean, yep. every week. And, she, and then they asked her, like, is it even worth it? And she said no. <laughs> She literally yeah, said uh, no. The, uh, it, it used to be called the Vice's new gaming podcast. Now I guess it would be the Waypoint podcast. Right, I started uh, they that. Were talking about, yeah, and they were talking about, the, yeah, like, from what we have heard, like, it's Patrick Lepick and Austin Walker, and Patrick's like, yeah, from what I've heard from people who work in the industry, like, every game is bad until you get, like, 80% done with it. And then you're like, oh, this is what it's good. You don't know until then. You mm-hmm. don't know if it's going to come together until, like, that 80% mark. But the point is, is that people think that games should come out the same clip that they do and i mean theoretically they we are still getting games all the time there's more games than ever to play now but because there's so many players making games but um they're not even close to as easy as they used to be and they're only getting yeah i'd be fine with like i'd be fine with like way shorter marketing cycles like this like one year at most the way fallout did like three or six months yeah like fallout like three or six months perfect where like you know it's going to be coming out then you've got it to a point where it's good you just have to polish it although i'd like the games to be better than fallout 4 right but i wish they would keep a lid on and i know that's probably hard but don't show us the game i mean it's one thing for us to hear because like for instance with bethesda again everybody's like we thought we were getting uh whatever uh, elder scrolls five um and they're like well we are working on it they kind of said it like kind of half hour well we are working on it but it's a long time like okay well that's good to know i I mean you guys aren't officially announcing it but that's that's nice to know that you're deep working on it knowing that you guys should keep a lid on it as best you can until it's almost done that's how you avoid the no man's sky situations where it's like Mm -hmm. you're showing target renders of stuff that's not going to be fucking like it's like if you made a short film and we're like 
hey, we're making this movie, and that's what you put out to fucking advertise your movie that was three years off and ends up being something totally yeah. different because shit changes. Yeah, I mean, like, even with, like, uh, even though this developer is amazing, CD Projekt Red with uh, Cyberpunk, they announced that way too early. Way too early. I'm fine with them announcing it because they didn't show anything. They were just like, yeah, Cyberpunk, we're making it. Get yeah. ready, it's going to come sometime. And, like, when we get a trailer for that game, I'm confident that what's in the trailer will be what's in the fucking game because mm-hmm. they've taken so long. Yeah, I, I yeah. I, I mean, I think the lesson to learn here is that if these developers are really, like, up against deadlines and people like Amy, Amy Hennig are working 80 hours a week and it's, like, destroying her social life. And it's, like, she basically has said, like, I don't think it's even close to worth it. Like, these amazing games, the, one of the people who's making it says, like, if they had a choice to do it again, or if it was up to them, they wouldn't do it. <laughs> so don't yeah, kill yourselves to make these games. I mean, don't... That crunch is, like, bullshit. Yeah, uh, this is just another piece of news because we're talking about crunch time here because uh, we should probably talk about this. We talked about it a little bit on the debate thing, but not everybody's going to listen to Italian that. It's Italian four cheese, so crunchy and munchy, delicious yeah. for your tummy. Yep. Uh, the SAG after a possible strike, if uh, they don't reach a deal by this Friday at midnight, they're going on strike. And like one of the things you always hear about that, like coming from game developers, is like, well, like, why should the fucking actors get royalties? We don't get royalties, and we make the games and have all this crunch time. It's like, well, maybe you motherfuckers should unionize and not have to do crunch time and also fight for royalties. Like, that's the answer here. You should be getting more, too, like, and should be treated better. Like, yeah, you shouldn't be working 80 hours a week to fill a fucking, redundant, like, stupid deadline. Yeah. It's not redundant. It's yeah, just stupid. fucking push back the games if you can't get them done. Like, I would rather a game be pushed back and come out good. Or like this, like, have them take... Like, it's been five years since Rockstar even announced GTA V. Yeah. Like, a little, like, four years since they shipped it about... So, like, I would rather them take four years to make a fucking game than, like, have to crunch like crazy and come out with something subpar yeah. because, like, nobody was at their peak when they were making it. Like, the Assassin's Creed games used to come out every year. And now, they've learned that We now. haven't heard about one for a while. Maybe. Yeah, they, put, they aren't doing one this year. It's the first year since the first one. They don't I'm, have one. I'm very curious. Very, I'm very curious to see what that'll be. Because, I mean... Yeah, like, we, we know the one, Egypt stuff. We got one every that, year. Like, Egypt will be a tight setting. Yeah. Holy shit. Uh, we got one every year. Uh, and then the uh, French people had no phases. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the last one was good. Um, uh, what was it called? Like, they don't even, they don't even, put, out, they yeah. don't even put out a, uh, a Transformers movie every year. But, you know? I mean... It's like every two years at most. Good is not what I want. I mean, I think, honestly, that series, if it was... They could totally overhaul it, and it could be something... Uh, incredible when it's right now it's just familiar you know it's yeah, fun right. it's just an example of like you shouldn't I mean I'm comfortable with waiting for art if it's going to be good you know Back absolutely. to the Future took seven years to write yeah so absolutely I mean everything waiting for the best possible product especially with these games we really care about like absolutely yeah, like, uh, take right your time too, with this like, game like with this, like I would kill to play this game today, but if it's going to be a better game coming out a year from now, like I will wait the fucking year. Like you now I'm getting the best thing possible. But, oh my god, I can't wait. I'm still a little surprised they haven't done a remaster, and I still think they will. Uh no, they won't because the uh, code for that game is so fucked up. It's weird that like, it, it plays was made on... by three different teams, and apparently, like it is barely held together on like the current consoles. Like that's why the PS3 version is so bad. Like, even the Xbox version had so many fucking weird glitches. Yeah, I had some really like weird ones. Is, yeah, that game is fairly held together by, like, a thread. Like, they would have to, like... That's why, like, they've come out and just straight up said that's why it never came out for PC. Because, like, they just would have to rewrite the entire thing. It's like, maybe they've had a small team working on that, but I kind of doubt it. Yeah, I suppose. But, I mean, if they made if, this if one they, good enough, If they announced, like... Red Dead Redemption Remastered out on PC, I would buy it in a fucking heartbeat, though. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I think, uh, well, we don't want to get too far into the weeds on this. We do want to do a quicker podcast here. I was going to say, just kind of go into Red Dead and, like, what holds up and doesn't. Because I have replayed it some of it recently. But it's a great game. I mean, it's it's a fucking awesome game. And them never making another one, I didn't seem as an option. So I'm really glad they're doing it. 
Can't wait. Yeah, I'm really excited. Like, I think making it about Marston is kind of boring, but other than that, like, I'm totally into it. I still think they should have made a, a unique title for it. Yeah, uh, Red Dead Renegades would have been a great Red Dead name. Revered. No. Red Dead... Uh, re, uh, Red Dead Revenge. Yeah, there you go. They all sound awesome. That They had to do it. Uh, if they are a gang that came from, like, the Civil War, Red Dead Rebels. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, all these are, are perfect. It, them calling yeah, it Red Dead Redemption the 2. Is the theme of the game Redemption? It might be. The only like, reason they're doing it... It's kind of trying to separate themselves from Revolver, because they didn't make Revolver. I still think it'd be cool, though, if yeah. they did it. Because even if you don't know about it, like... I don't know. The name Red Dead Redemption just like, kind of slides off the tongue so awesome. Like Red yeah. Dead Redemption 2 is not cool. I always think if you can go with a subtitle that's like that like kind of like gives you in one word what this game is Red about. Because redemption is absolutely what that game is about. So like it so are they also doing another redemption in this one? They might be cuz I don't think you're going to play as Marston. I don't like maybe you play as him in some instances, but I don't think he's the main character. I don't. I don't I mean, think. I don't think there's going to be any kind of argument that I think this this title makes sense to me. I know. Um, we'll we'll have to see the game. The only here's the reason why they're doing it is because they're afraid that idiots will be like, "Is this related to Red Dead?" I don't know. I'm gonna buy something thing, else I'll instead. Red Dead Redemption Two, and then before it comes out, or even so, everybody on the planet knows it's Red Dead Redemption Two, but they could call it something else tomorrow in the trailer. I think they um, should. I don't think so, though. Yeah, but we'll see. Red yeah, Dead we'll Redemption see. Two sounds fine. Any of those names gonna... that you came up with, Gabe, I think would be far superior in what they should have done. Red Dead Revelations. Red, Red Dead, Dead Revolution, and it takes place during the American Revolution. So but it's not okay. Place. Also, Red if Dead... it's not a continuation of the story from the first one, I don't know. I just if if it's a prequel, it's a, if, it's, if it's a prequel, then I it's even dumber. Nah. Because you can have two and have it be a prequel. Red Dead. Metal Gear Solid 3. Well, Red Dead let's, and 5. Like, that game makes sense with the numbering. That's another example of something that doesn't make sense, but whatever. All right, anyway, let's move on to what we've been uh, consuming this week. I'll start us off. Uh, I got that Rock Band Rivals. Red Dead Rivals. There you go. <laughs> Red Dead Rock Band. Uh, yeah, uh, so they put out, like, their expansion and also, like, their uh, big up title update for this, their 2.0 update. This is basically Rock Band 5, just not calling it that. Uh, I went out and I got the big pack that comes with the game and the new guitar, because they have, uh, they've dropped Mad Cats, it's now PDP making it, and they have a new guitar. Uh, that new guitar is the best Rock Band guitar I've ever used. It's nice. fucking amazing. Wait, yeah. Mad Cats of the uh, knockoff controller? Yes. Yeah. Holy shit, they yep. made, like, the Rock Band guitar? They made, yeah. They, yeah, they were making the official Rock Band stuff. They also make really good, uh, they used to make really good, like, uh, fight sticks for fighting games. Huh. That's what they were good at. But I never picked them for making an original anything. Yeah. Uh, but PDP has fucking outclassed them in every way. The only thing that's missing is the little switch that changes your effect, like when you're in star mode. Did anybody ever but, use that? Yeah, I never used that. The wah pedal? No, that's still got the yeah the wah bar. The flanger switches off. It's still got the uh, the uh, the whammy bar, but whammy bar. it just doesn't have the switch. I always use the whammy but, uh, bar. Yeah, yeah, but it's a fucking solid guitar. It uh, folds. It folds. You hook it up and it folds Ooh. down, so you can store it really easy. It's really nice. All right. Actually. So, question: Does the whammy bar yeah. actually do anything, score wise? Uh, when you are score wise, no. What it does is if it is a note that's going giving you star power. If you whammy bar during that, like on that note that is giving you star power, like the long held note, it will give you more star power. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Like, I mean, because I always, yeah. on the long notes, I'd always like hit it. Doesn't matter if it's star power or not, because it sounds cool and it feels cool. But yeah. I was like wondering, like, eh, does it do anything? Like, that's, yeah, that's kind that's of the, the thing. Only thing mechanically it does. That's the kind of the thing with like Rock Band and Guitar Hero, like the score stuff, because I'm not the best. Who cares? You know, like, I'm not going to be yeah. the best player, so I'm not. I don't care about that stuff. Like, yeah, if you can get five stars, that's all you really need, and that mm -hmm. ties into another thing. This is a let's get into the uh, before we get into that. Actually, uh, with the patch, what it also does is uh, it gives you uh, it's a brand new UI for the game that runs way faster. Uh, so everybody who has Rock Band Four gets this. 
With that, you get new sorting options for all your stuff. You can finally search through your DLC, which is really fucking nice if you're somebody like Neo's 1300 songs. Like, you can just search and get the one thing real fast. Uh, it's just way snappier. Uh, and if you buy the expansion, you get online multiplayer. That's finally back in. You get a bunch of new stuff in the rock shop, like new outfits, new instruments, all that. And you get this brand new uh, single player mode called the Rockumentary, which is like a fake behind the music style documentary with a bunch of like full motion video like live action shit which is really funny i've played through like the first two steps of it it's like it's really funny and like that's where you want to get the score like you want to get five stars on those so you yeah. get the best possible path for the next thing uh I'm, if you're not super into rock band i don't think you should buy the rivals thing you should try and get the new guitar however you can because it's totally worth it but if you're super into rock band, if you play a lot, like going through this rockumentary with your friends would be really cool. And uh, if you're playing like online, if you're like an online person, like there's new songs know. too, right? No, not in Rivals. Really? No, no there songs? was a uh, pre-order. If you pre-ordered it, you got like ten songs, but that's it. There are new songs on its own. Interesting. How much Finally was it? And I just bought some new songs. It's thirty bucks. Oh, for then, just the expansion. But the it's guitar. If you get the guitar. Okay. It's ninety if you get the guitar. All right. So, uh, yeah, the guitar alone, I think, is worth the price of admission. Because that guitar is really fucking nice. You know, if uh, if they had the customs and stuff like that on here for the PS4 version or whatever. I guess I have an Xbox One, but I, I don't own any of these games anymore. It's basically once um, Andrew... Uh, well, you'd still, he... the, you'd still want to buy it for the 360 because any DLC you had before... Yeah, I, well, I, probably, I might have some, but... Yeah, I mean, pretty much we had our central place to play, so any of the Rockman stuff was always at Andrew's yep. house. So it was, and it still is. I mean, he's got those ion drums. Do you have the ion drums? No, I, I never got the ions. I was oh, never a big drummer. Ah, oh, man, they're so cool. That's true, but I mean, it's nice that that's the whole thing. Like, you gotta have somebody who likes to do it. Oh, also, uh, with the uh, thing with PDP taking over, uh, there is an adapter for the ion drums coming out, so those will work with Rock Band 4 going forward. That's good to know. Yeah. I feel like someday, maybe, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, if you uh, want an extra copy of the game, uh, I now have an extra copy. I'd give that to you for real. Is Rock, is Rock uh, the 360 version? Is that game backwards compatible on Xbox One? No, 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 it's backwards compatible. I don't have an Xbox 360 anymore. I get rid you of it. You have a one. No, I'm saying I, I have an extra <clears> copy <throat> of Rock Band 4 because uh, the for Xbox game one? came with an Xbox Yes. Because the kit came huh. with a new copy of the full game. Well, that's not the part so that's expensive anyway. It's the all the instruments. Do you have Do you have instruments? No, all I have right now is Guitar Hero Live. That's it. Uh, and all my well, instru all the instruments, the instruments all the instruments I had have been donated to, to to Andy because why else would I keep them? Like that's where they're used, you know. When they well, broke, if he I just gets an him. Xbox One. I'll probably see if he wants to just buy this for me, real cheap. Yeah, I'm. I, I recommend. Got me to this game now. No I'm telling knows. everybody that's like considering because Adam almost bought an Xbox One for Gears of War. I'm like, just wait for the Scorpio. You, you can yeah, borrow my Scorpio. fucking Xbox One. So yeah. All right, uh, let's move on though. Uh, you've been. I've played a little bit of this too, but you've played way more. Uh, Battlefield One. Yeah. Um. I'm. I've probably played. I mean, I played a little bit of the beta and everything like that, but I've probably played the official version on PC and uh, PS4 probably a total of four or five hours, mostly multiplayer. I've only played the first mission of the single player, and I've probably played the uh, rest which of Which first mission of the single player? Well, the one it forces you to play. Yeah. It forces you to play it. Oh, and... just the tutorial. The yeah. Tutorial. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, uh, what I've played is I've played one mission of the... Uh, I played one game of multiplayer. I played that tutorial. And I played one uh, campaign mission, one of the uh, Africa Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah, well, we can talk about the, uh, Bedouin Girl. Yeah. We can talk about the single player first. I mean, um, I've always maybe that, this that tutorial mission is fucking amazing. Right, everything it's about it. Great. It's because I mean, well, that's here's the thing though with Battlefield games. I've always thought they have strong opening missions, but then the rest of the game is boring as shit. How is it so far after that first mission? Oh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, I picked the wrong one to play next. I'm to say that because like I was like, oh, that'll be cool, hanging out with Lawrence of Arabia and stuff. But uh, like 
it seems like each of them is doing a slightly different focus, mm-hmm. and the one in Africa is doing like a stealth thing, oh. and stealth doesn't work in that game at all. I heard that so, one of the guys uh, was really boring, so maybe it was him. Yeah. Well, it's her. It's this oh. chick. Oh, the like, chick with the like, weird it's stuff an in interesting face. character. Yeah, it's an interesting character, and it's an interesting idea. Like, and it's an interesting like storyline is interesting. Like hanging out with Lawrence of Arabia. It's just the gameplay itself wasn't doing it for me there because like having to sneak around. So it's like That's... I need to go back and like I want to find whatever one is the trench one and do that. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, just as far as that first mission, like everything about it, it's not so much like I feel like it's less like trying to be a game game and more just trying to evoke all the feelings that might be like if you're in a battle, you know. Yeah. Does it continue? Well, obviously, it doesn't continue this, but like the thing where you die and you become another soldier? Does that uh, continue? No, it doesn't do that. It, that is, at least in the one I played. That's fucking that. brilliant, I think. I, I just think when the you way die they, in the uh, campaign I was playing, though, it does give you that same, like, their name and, like, the years they lived. But then it is game over? Yeah, and that just starts okay. you back at the next checkpoint. Because last checkpoint. one of the problems with these games is, like, in the past, is you're a one man army, you're killing less people, and no doubt the AI is stupid and too stupid in a lot of ways like yes it's possible some guy in real life would be killing people left and right but there's no way somebody would be like i don't know it just it's un- unrealistic for one guy to kill like this many people so for them to make the game just inherently harder and dying as a part of it like you're just supposed to die you're not supposed to live you know uh i was like well they've solved the, the real the real dark battlefield starts now yeah exactly well, yeah exactly i mean they've solved a problem where you're just this dumb idiot that's shooting all these people and you don't die and all the other people are so stupid. They should have made it brutally hard. And maybe it would get kind of annoying because like, there are certain games that have like technically no real death. And it is kind of annoying. Like You're constantly dying and dying and dying and dying. Like Bioshock has this problem. Like You keep dying, but you just revive right away. And it's like you kind of just feel like, well, maybe they should have just made me more survivable, you know? Like survivability should have been more, should have been better, and then I wouldn't be dying so often. But uh, I mean, maybe that would get it old in this game if you were dying frantically. But I don't know. I think it, I think it really um, that first that first level, the tutorial, really does a great job of like getting you just into the feeling, uh, the way it zooms out, and all of a sudden you're at a turret, and there's just this like amazing orchestral score playing, and the sound effects are incredible. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, like, that game sounds really good. Like I was in a like tank. It, it sound, like I was I was down in the uh, our theater room with like the five point mm-hmm. one turned really high, like on a giant screen. It like it sounds like you're in a fucking war. Yeah, I mean I'm gonna like the part that I would just literally like my jaw hit the floor is like I'm in a tank and I'm shooting and I can hear the spare shells just like clanking, like really realistically, yeah. but not like just falling. It almost it almost seemed like they actually um, it was like happening in real time, like clanking, like. And I don't know. It just it all just kind of came together really well. It looked amazing. I think it looks amazing on both on PS4 and PC. Like yeah, I was playing on Xbox One. Uh, there's some frame rate issues there, but it still looks really good. I uh, here's uh, my one complaint about it. Uh, this is for uh, multiplayer specifically, kind of. Uh, the contrast is such that it's really hard to see the other team. I haven't had that issue. I've had all kinds of other. Uh, weird issues. I did, I'd say the biggest problem is the UI is a little buggy sometimes, especially yeah, when like, I'll be walking along and like get shot and like it'll zoom in on them. It's like I didn't fucking see them at all. I've I've been getting my ass kicked until recently. I just the, the guns are just they take a lot of getting used to. But I, I mean the main the main focus of these games has always been the multiplayer, and I mean it seems to be no different with this one. It's really good. Um, I've always thought My Battlefield. My favorite part of the one match I played was like I spawned in a dude's plane with him, so he was flying and I was like the uh, gunner. Yeah. And it was just like me and him, so I was switching back and forth from like tail gun to front gun. Yeah. And we were just like the other team had a zeppelin, so we were just doing like strafing runs on the zeppelin, trying to bring it down. That was really fucking cool. Yeah. Um, it, it there's like a lot of moments in this game where you just have like a like a power moment. I don't know what to, what the word like something crazy happens and it just like it just completely changes like the course of the battle and you get this like like adrenaline and that doesn't happen in call of duty like i've always thought battlefield is like i'm surprised that i mean obviously both these games are huge but i always thought like why is call of duty the one that's so big when battlefield is like 
so much more grand in scale. Like you're, it's a full battle. It's a huge uh, a battlefield. You know, you have vehicles that actually run. You have planes flying around in the sky. You I have, think this is going to be the year where those numbers finally shift because yeah. there is nothing but hype going into Battlefield One, and I. Does anybody fucking care about Infinite Warfare? I care it's not. Probably. I'm a little bit interested. What'd you say? Uh, here's here's the best part of that, David. Uh, the studio making it Infinity War. <laughs> I don't think it's a bad name. I think it makes sense, but I'm. It's kind of. Parody. I'm okay with. I don't hate the um, Call of Duty games. I didn't really care for the last one, but I did like Advanced Warfare. I and haven't it, liked the Call of Duty games since Black Ops Two. Yeah, I. I am. I'll like, rent it. Uh, what do you say? Yeah, David? it seems like a rental game. Like Battlefield One seems like something you might want to buy. Like, I have Michael's copy here, so like I can just play that whenever he's not fucking playing it. So mm-hmm. I'll just do that. But like, it seems like if that wasn't the case, like if I played as much of it as I did today, I probably would have bought that game instead of Rock Band. Yeah, like, it's it's good so far. Uh, it's it's similar to Battlefront. I mean, actually, you can tell it's on the same engine. I mean, um, it, they play similarly. I think. Um, Are there more than four maps? Yes. It, there's like five, but they're like multi-layered. There's this operations yeah. mode where you like, you're like, it's like a war of attrition. Like you start out on one side, and depending on how the battle goes, you get pushed back or forward. And that seems like the mode to play right now. Um, it's really interesting. So the, um, that insane shit that happens in every match does that always happen? Like that always happens towards like the last third, right? Uh, um, no, that Zeppelin showed up about halfway this, through, and we were, like, working the rest of them fucking match trying to take down their Zeppelin. They don't and have... The game of Zeppelin is, is a candidate for the, the year. The first, the first match I jumped in, into, um, they were going, like, we're taking on the Zeppelin, and they all were, like, screaming, and I, I got chills, and I looked up, and I saw a Zeppelin on fire, and there was music playing, and this is in the multiplayer mm-hmm. now, all right? It was, like, it was this dramatic music playing, and it was falling yep. slowly, and I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, this I is was incredible. out of the uh, airplane. Like, we got shot down, so I spawned on the ground before we took down ours. And, like, I just looked up. Like, nobody said anything. Like, I have chat turned it off. I just looked up and just saw it, like, falling in the distance with that music. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. It was really fucking oh, cool. And then all of a sudden I had the option to spawn in it. And I'm like, I'm on the Zeppelin. I was on the top on a, on a gun. And I'm like, I'm on the Zeppelin. I'm on the Zeppelin. And some guy flew by in a, in a plane and shot me out. And my body was falling off, and I'm like, I'm off the Zeppelin. I'm off the Zeppelin. I, I don't know. It's it's stupid fun. There's glitches and stuff all over the time, all over the place. But they're kind of like funny, you know? Like yeah, it's like, like the Mafia Three glitches, where it's yeah. like it's more charming than anything else. You know, this just sounds like uh, something. If I had a PS4, I would buy. It's fun. I like it. Just, I get my I mean, Zeppelin. Zeppelin. That sounds great. It's not a very good World War One simulator, which is what I was looking for, but it's a very good Battlefield game. Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't... I my uh, Obviously, I've learned about World War One, but do they even have automatic weapons during World War One? I? I thought yes, it was... A... Uh, as it went along, they got them. Like, World War One was very much the war where, like, the old school, like, everybody just stand in a big line and shoot your muskets at each other. I thought that was a civil war. Like, our current... No, like oh, that yeah. was going up, up into World War. Like, it's where it changed into what we have yeah, now. World War One is, I mean, but yeah. like the tactics hadn't changed is the thing. So like, yeah. uh, if you ever listen to, like Dan Carlin's Hardcore History, he has a really good series on it. It basically like, like the tactics hadn't changed. So like, you'd still have people like lining up their armies and like trying to do that. But then like you'd have like the other team would just have a fucking machine gun, and that's why it was like the bloodiest war ever. Like there's still places in Europe where. Uh, like in France specifically, where like nothing will grow because the yeah. land is just so fucked up from like the wars, and like that's why the trenches got started because it was like that being translated like, well, how do we deal with this? We just get down. It's like it's, yeah. it feels very much like the other battlefield games, not so much like World War One, but I don't think World War One is a very fun, fast-paced AAA action game. Yeah, yeah. like there it is works. Some, there are some games on Steam that are like hardcore simulation World War One games, which is that's what they're for. Yeah, I think uh, you know what I would I would think would be a good uh, format for a uh, World War One game, like a Mother style game, like Mother Three. Uh, there's this game that came out last year, Valiant Hearts, which is like a side-scrolling like action adventure game, uh, which is like it's all story focused. Like that seems like the way to go with World War One. I. I got that yeah, for free on PlayStation Plus. I still haven't played it. 
It's good. It's a good game. Because, like, Battlefield is about the combat. I think, like, World War One is definitely a story war because the yeah. story is this, in, yeah. this change from old world to new world and old warfare to new warfare. As it's happening, you're having to – you're walking and then you have to run. Yeah, yeah, there's a thing Dan Carlin brings up on that podcast where, like, if you look at the uh, – if you look at pictures of like the French army going into World War One, they're wearing like the exact same like bright red and blue outfits that like uh, Napoleon's army had. Like they had the same hats. Like it was the same colors. Yeah, it was Napoleonic, you know, outfits. By the end, it was like gray military fatigues. Nothing fancy about it. Everybody with a fucking machine gun. Like, yeah. No swords. Camouflage. Yeah, like camouflage, like bayonets on the end of their stuff still for like trench runs. Fucking gas masks, like modern soldier kits, basically. I still think that war should fight with swords. Yeah. And any, any, using a gun in a war makes you a bitch. Don't be a yeah. bitch. You, you, you gotta kill a man. You gotta get right next to him. Yeah. You know that's that's manly if you want to be about that, which I know that like that's what war is, is chasing this masculine ideal. Uh, so in that spirit, I'd say just go back to swords and you know, get rid of guns. <laughs> Get rid of guns and let's go back to swords. You know, pummel dude. Well, there is a game like that. Rocks. There is a game like that. It's called, uh, I want to say it's just called Medieval or something. It's ridiculously oh, fun. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, like uh, where you can fucking chop people's heads off and shit. Yeah, and like it's there's, Steam, right? there's a, yeah, it's on PS4 now too. There's a, your but, there's a button in the game that's dedicated to to your war cry, like screaming, like, rah, yeah. as you're charging. Yeah, it's I've stupid got the fun. Game, whatever, whatever that game is called, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'd like a movie or a game that is like set in the modern day, but there are no guns in the war. It's like a war story with no guns. It's like knights and stuff, but in a modern day, like they just never developed guns. So it's still. It's, you know, modern standards of armor. But do you have, like, drones that just had swords at the end of them just flying into people? You still have arrows and stuff. <laughs> but it's like, you know, dudes would get up dressed up in metal so you couldn't cut through them or whatever. And it's like, how much metal can we put on a guy? And, you know, Iron Man would definitely be a different movie in that universe. All right, uh, let's move on. The Battlefield 1, it's good. Everybody should play the Battlefield 1. So far, anyway, yeah, it's it definitely is. Uh, let's move on. Uh, over the weekend, we watched, like, uh, it was our werewolf night. So, uh, David, tell me about Teen Wolf and an American werewolf in London. Yeah, so, uh, Teen Wolf and Team 4, and uh, it's real good. Michael J. Fox didn't like this movie, is, is what you said? Yeah, he hates this movie. I don't know why. Because <laughs> it's, um, it's a fun movie. It's not like, uh, I don't know if it's a great movie. It's not even really like a horror movie. It's clearly not interested in horror elements because uh, when it's, you know, his, like, <laughs> the way they react to werewolves is just really cool. It's like, yeah, werewolves. Uh, yeah, the part where he, he's playing basketball. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he turns, the first time he turns he into a werewolf ball. in public is he, like he gets piled on. Yeah, and then they come off him and he's all hairy. And he just, like, everybody's silent. He just starts dribbling the ball, and he just plays it cool. And then he like just because nobody's, everybody's like so stunned. They're not scared. They're just stunned. He just moves all the way to the end of the court and throws and gets a well, basket. Well, they're they're scared until they see how awesome he is. Yeah, it's like oh, yeah, until geez. he plays his fucking ball. Real and he good. surfs on the car. He surfs on that van. The van. You know, I, I uh, if I ever go to an eighties themed like party where you have to dress up as an 80s dude or whatever or an 80s character or whatever i'm going as styles from his van surfing scene where he surfed on the van uh because styles is uh my new favorite character yep he's this... such a cool dude he's cool and like he's popular too at school but he's not like he's not a jock like it's it's different he's not a nerd character i mean this is like an this is what for 87 or something yeah it's an 80s movie it's really an 80s teen comedy more than it is a, a movie about werewolves uh, or, or a movie about um, it just it's like it happens to have werewolves it's not a scary movie at all it's it's totally interested in just being a teen 80s 80s teen movie uh, through and through and it's it's also I mean it's it's you know very similar to better off dead in in its um, way that like the main character is chasing this girl who's not right for him or the girl that's right for him is like next to him the whole time or whatever uh, even down to the color of the girl's hair is the same as, as it matches up in Better Off it, Dead. Is, um, uh, is this the movie where the guy's got the shirt that says, what are you looking at, dick nose? Yes. Yeah, that's yes. one of the shirts. He has these great shirts. That shirt. And, 
Yeah, and he, uh, but so so Styles is an interesting character because he's not like any kind of archetype from from that. He's not like this nerdy guy. He's definitely hanging with Michael J. Fox, but Michael J. Fox isn't that cool. Like he is this scrawny guy until he becomes the wolf. He's not that cool, and um, he is also, but he's not like a jock. He's just straight up a cool guy. But he's not like cool in the way that he. Pro- I mean, he probably has some insecurities. But it's like that's not really a factor into his character. He's just cool and weird, just because he's more in the spirit of like the characters, some of the characters from Dazed and Confused, than like any kind of '80s movie. No, he's he's not he's not like um, Charles Demar from Better Off Dead. He's like definitely you know he's always on, but he's he, the frequency he's tuned to is when it's like real chill and real '70s. Yeah, it's like it's like you get this thing where like he's not like the coolest guy in the world. Like he's trying to get this keg, so like they'll let him in the party and all that but like when he gets to the party he brings the keg and it's like the eighth keg they have yeah but like it cuts like a little bit later and he's like basically running the party he's like took over is like the he's not hosting it it's yeah, not his like, party he's but he's MC. hosting it he's emceeing this party where he's like running all these games with like people like fucking like guys and girls like wrestling in fucking uh whipped cream and like shoving michael j fox in the fucking uh yeah he's just like effortlessly cool and yeah. it's really so yeah, I really like his character, and I really uh, will be him in any in any '80s party I have to go to. Um, the van surfing is real cool. Uh, apparently, there's no van surfing in the MTV show. There yeah, is I, a I, Styles in the MTV show. I have no idea what he's like because I've never seen this show, but I'm curious now because I have no idea what like what the MTV hot teenagers uh, version of Styles is gonna be. Uh, but he does he wear sunglasses indoors at night? Does he wear shirts with like cool phrases on them? Uh, I'm seeing some pictures. Gabe's looking up on his yeah. Phone. This is style. This dude does not wear sunglasses in any of his uh, any of these Google. This this, this image looks kind of like you would expect from <laughs> yeah, Styles. Yeah, that's that's a good one. But if I'm looking at this, he apparently like maybe also becomes a werewolf at some point. Well, I guess if you have a TV show about werewolves that's like a little more serious, a little more into the horror uh, elements, even if it's spoofing it a little. Uh, you're definitely gonna have more werewolves. You're gonna have to talk about uh, lycanthropy and people becoming werewolves. Whereas this one, it's uh, in Team Wolf the movie. It's just a genetic thing. He's like, he, you know, it. <laughs> yeah, his dad was a werewolf, and it passed on this. to him. I didn't know about the part where his dad shows up and he's like yeah. fully werewolf is so stupid. Yeah. One of the funniest fucking things, because yeah, you think like, oh shit, what happened to Michael J. Fox? He get bit by a wolf off screen that we didn't see, and this is happening now. It's very much like Spider Man in that way, you know? It's like, oh, you wouldn't understand what changes I'm going through and stuff. And like, you know, his dad opens the door, and his dad's full wolf, and his son's full wolf, and just everybody. And so it's like, and his dad doesn't even look that much like a wolf. He looks more like a like a beaver person or something, or or like a, a prairie dog but it's so funny it's like oh it's just it's in the family like that was such a great reveal and um yeah it's it's cool i don't know if this it seems like it seems like this movie is one that everybody knows but i don't feel like it, it's um maybe talked about as much because i had certainly known about it but i didn't know enough details about it like i didn't know any of the characters besides michael j fox um going into it so it's interesting. It's like in the public consciousness, but the details aren't like it's not as iconic as something like Ghostbusters or Star Wars, where like you know everything. Um, it's definitely in that regard. I mean, it's you know, it's like Better Off Dead, but with werewolves. Uh, it's cool. It's it's cool. Um, All right, let's talk about uh, American Werewolf in London, which I got the uh, new Blu-ray of. It's a new transfer. It looks fantastic. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, I've never seen uh, this movie. American Wolf of Werewolf of London is great. It's maybe uh, John Landis's best movie. Uh, let me look up what else John Landis has done, and I'll confirm or deny that. Yeah, so American Werewolf in London is famous for its transformation scenes. Mm-hmm. Its transformation scenes definitely uh, very, 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 like... I mean, we also watched The Howling, and that has cool transformations to it as well, given... Uh, and that movie came out, like, a couple of years before that. Um but when was the original uh, fright night was that around that time too yeah around the same time yeah so this is what 81 Never mind, that wasn't werewolves yeah, that's american, family. american world yeah american world from london is 81 81 yes. so it's still technically the 70s we, we were talking that night because like uh the howling takes place in the 70s we were talking about how the 70s didn't or the 80s didn't begin till like 1984 which is when like everything from the 80s came out um so yeah this movie 
yeah, it, it's it's really cool. It's a really cool movie. Uh, I didn't know that because you see in the artwork all the time, it's these two guys on the posters and stuff. One of them just straight up dies in the beginning, um, but he comes back, and it's a really cool thing. I've never seen any other movie do something like this with werewolves. It like creates this mythology about it. I guess. I mean, maybe it's drawing off something, but basically, like his friend gets killed, he gets bitten, so he becomes a werewolf. Um, his friend says his friend comes back as this, you know, uh, mauled body, but he's talking. Yeah, and, and, and every basically. time he shows up, he's more and more decayed. Yeah, is this movie is this movie like a like a horror movie or is it more? It's kind a of horror like, comedy. Okay, horror comedy, that's how I was wondering. Like, it, but it's it's, it's a very movie. slow burn to get to the comedy. Yeah, it's it's the comedy. It's not a it's not jokes a minute. It's not like Animal House or uh, the Blues Brothers, which are uh, his t- uh, preceding movies. Uh, before this it's more um, yeah it's like the, the funniest set piece is like it's the end. end it's the end of the movie where there's just this chaos that happens and just so many people die like the werewolf doesn't attack that many people at the end it's mostly just like car accidents it, he, he becomes a werewolf in the middle of Piccadilly Circus in the UK and yeah. just fucking like cars crashing and people getting run over and crushed by cars a cop like a car side uh, sidelines into another car like it's like you know the two cars get basically pushed together because their sides hit each other and there's a cop in the middle so like he you know from the chest down he's just crushed and it's so funny it's just the funniest part of the movie i was laughing so much um but and also like and there's jokes before, uh the jokes are like yeah the jokes are definitely like slower or more subtle or just in the in the little details um there is like the other funniest part is like there's uh, the thing that's in all of John a lot of John Landis movies uh, his fake movie See You Next Wednesday, yeah. which is like a porn movie that's always getting advertised. Did you actually see some of that in this? And like here's like an example of that like he's in the porn theater watching the movie, and it's like a guy and a girl going at it, and a third guy walks in. He's like, oh my god, I told you never to do this again. And the guy looks at him, he's like, you did, you told me no such thing. He's like, I was talking to her. He's like. I've never seen you before in my life. He's like, oh, sorry, and turns around and walks out of the scene. Yeah, and, and then they <laughs> keep going back at it. And, yeah. like, later on in that movie, too, there's this bit where the woman picks up the phone, and it's, like, a wrong number or something. <laughs> it's, it's just a strange, for, for, like, you know, a movie just to be, you know, the movie that's playing in the theater where the scene is set when they cut back to it. You know, you got to see a little bit of the movie. It's this funny little bits of this movie. It, it all, it's something that belonged in, like, Kentucky Fried Movie, which is, like, his yeah, first thing in 77. Yeah, it's definitely like a, like a soft spoof yeah. of a porno from that era. It's real funny. Uh, so, yeah, this movie, yeah, it's it's not as much of a comedy. It's pretty horror, but it's, it's more of a monster movie. Like, his best friend comes back, and it's a really, like, a really cool, unique thing that this movie does is his friend comes back and talks to him, um, and he's not really a ghost, but he's just, you know, he's just dead. You know, he's he's dead. stuck in limbo because he was killed by a werewolf. Yeah. And to move on, the last werewolf has to die. <laughs> and, like, the dude who we're following is the last werewolf. Yeah, so he's like, you gotta kill yourself, David. And, <laughs> and it's real good. Uh, and, and David doesn't believe it, and then he freaks out, and he wakes up naked in the zoo in the wolf den, and he just, like, climbs out. <laughs> and he runs, uh, he runs yeah, that's another naked. funny sequence where he has to like get clothes and get back to his apartment when he wakes up naked I realized then that I watched <laughs> an entire movie of someone being naked somewhere where they have to get across town naked <laughs> so, I mean it's basically, it's basically this because it's because um, the hope versus fear is so immediate like you're naked in public you can't you have to go through public to get back to where you can get clothes on but you can't let anybody see you naked it's it's a, it's a, it's immediately this tension um but a comedic tension so it's i think it's great material for storytelling and of course like the simpsons did it in that uh natural born kissers episode where marge and homer in the golf course yeah. and they run away uh and so yeah i think i could watch a whole movie of that but the scenes of it in this movie are pretty great and um the, the British hospital has like this like thing going on where there's like this little it's almost like a British show that's like crossed over for a little bit that just takes place in a hospital uh, there's the pub that does pub that never has food like both, both times people go to this pub where like they uh, you know the town knows about these werewolves way up in the way up in the whatever they called it what do they call it 
the oh, the moors, the moors. They're the Scottish moors. Yeah, these these people at this pub is like have just have no food. They have nothing warm either. Uh, but yeah, it's um, it's cool. It's a really cool movie. A lot of cool ideas. We were talking about um, maybe blasphemy. We were talking about remaking it. Uh, who we would cast? Mark Ruffalo. It was a fun thing. We were talking. Yeah, David would be played by Mark Ruffalo, and Jack would be played by Robert Downey Jr. Perfect pairing. You, know, older, you have to age them up a little bit. You know, instead of students on a business trip or just on a trip because they're buds. I don't know, whatever. But then we had the twist where David gets killed and Jack is the one who's alive. So right? Yeah. So yeah. It'd, so it'd be um, so it'd be uh, Mark Ruffalo would be the dead guy talking to, or no wait, it was the other way around. Yeah. yeah. Robert Downey Jr. because because the guy who plays David, who's also named David, the actor's name is David. Uh, David looks like Michael pointed out Robert Downey Jr. and Who's the other guy? Had a baby. I don't know. I don't was, remember. I, I would know it if I could look at him. Uh, it's it's Robert Downey Jr. and someone having a baby. And I was like, yeah, that's it. So Robert Downey Jr. played David. Mark Ruffalo would play Jack. But then Ruffalo would be the one who gets bitten. And, and Robert Downey Jr. would be the one who dies. And that that dynamic alone is like if they were making a remake, that's who I would have to cast. Um, but then we talked about if they were younger, like, because the guy who played Jack reminds me a lot of Paul Dano. So if they're doing the young guys in a remake, I would say it's Paul Dano, Dano and Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac. Or, Paul Dano needs to be in more stuff, period. Donald Gleason. Yeah, I was, yeah, Paul Dano is great. I love him with Swiss Army Man. Have you, He's, just, I, just, a, just a quick question. Have you seen uh, There Will Be Blood? Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. I have, it's great. Get him on that, man. We're going to yeah. do we were going to do that on the Paul Thomas Anderson day. Yeah, but it was too heavy. It's, it's too also heavy. too long. We, oh, that was so that. good. We'd already watched uh, The Master and Boogie Night. Yeah. That, 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 and those movies are both like two and a half, three hours long. Yeah, but There Will Be Blood is like one of those movies that you're watching it, and it's just like mesmerizing before you know it's over. Uh, yeah. For me, anyway. If we do, so we do another Paul Thomas Anderson night. Should we do There Will Be Blood and uh, Inherent Vice yeah. in that order? So yeah, yeah, I do it in that way. After the hardness, and then yeah. both both nights would end with a uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, All right, so uh, yeah, American Werewolf in London. See it. Uh, that sounds new interesting. Uh, new, the new Blu-ray is really good. It's like ten dollars at Best Buy. Yeah, I'm just gonna, go get it. Just go, go buy. It. It. Uh, maybe I should because I've never seen it before. Yeah, it's a movie that like I mean, I have a friend who's really into it, so I had always sort of felt the pressure of like this is a movie I gotta see at some point. I'm really glad I finally saw it. It's a fantastic film. It's really funny in like subtle ways and not so much crack and joke ways. It's really like balancing a lot of, it's balancing different tones and it's like pulling it off, um, and you know speaks to John. Land and this is like a year after John Landis did Blues Brothers, so it just you know, good director. Yeah, it's too bad he killed those kids, but uh. What? Anyway, like, uh, yeah, the Twilight Zone. He was he directed that. Uh... He directed that segment where, like, the actor and the two kids who were working for him illegally got killed in that helicopter. Oh, okay. I thought you meant, like, he killed somebody, like, murdered them on purpose. I was no, like, Whoa. It was accident, but he was still responsible. But he got off for it because he was a rich Hollywood man. So Spielberg came in. Yeah, Spielberg came in and bailed him out. Well, they him. determined that he was, like, he wasn't taking all the precautions or something? Or Yeah, yeah. Those kids were working illegally. Uh, he was telling the pilot to do shit he shouldn't have been doing. Just go look at the Wikipedia page for it. It covers it all. Okay. Uh, anyway, let's talk about coming soon. Uh, no games really coming out. Uh, Battlefield for well, if you didn't do. Early Titanfall access. two comes out next week. Uh, no, it doesn't. It's the week after next. I'm pretty sure it's next Friday. No, it it might be Friday, but uh, it's after our next podcast is the thing. That's true. Yeah, if we do record Wednesday, we'll talk yeah, about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, for movies though, uh, Jack Reacher two, Jack Reacher Never Go Back, the sequel to that Tom Cruise movie where Werner Herzog was the villain. I uh, I was watching uh, Atlanta tonight, and the the end of that movie was on the because I recorded it on my my TiVo, and I always record everything early just in case. The end of that movie was on there, and I never want to watch that movie based on that ending because it looks so stupid in a bad way. I've heard that I've heard that like Werner Herzog is worth watching that movie for, but uh, nothing else. About it, it, it. I can't remember what the line was. It had one of the most cliche lines of all time. I can't remember like, but I was like. Ah, man, that's too cheesy. Like, not in a good way. Like, it's bad cheesy. Like, they think they have a really cool character when he's not cool. Like, that's the thing. 
Yeah, well, that's know. Jack Reacher's thing is like he's the greatest man of all time ever. But I don't, yeah, I don't think they're selling that. So it's like if that's your bag, it's kind of a dad movie. Yeah. Sure. You know. Yeah, if your dad really likes Tom Clancy stuff, he'll love Jack Reacher. <laughs> Jack Reacher, and just the well, just the name of it, Jack Reacher. Yeah. And Tom Cruise, like from the books, super miscast like, is that role because Jack Reacher is like seven feet tall. Have you okay? The books. This is kind of well, it's not a tangent, but it's like it's kind of related. But have you seen uh, uh, Tim Heidecker's uh, like take on these kind of things? He's got a show called Decker. No. It's literally. I mean, like it's it's this Adult Swim show where like every episode's like thirty minutes or thirty like three minutes long, and like half of it is just explaining and like really long winded like what happened last week, and it's. It's just making fun of like this. You should watch it, and I don't know when the show airs, but like it'd be. It seems like if you didn't know about it, it'd be impossible to catch it because it, it could air between shows or something. But it's making fun of it. Yeah, you should check it out. I will. That sounds pretty good. Uh, also, about uh, thirty one, which is the this is like a limited theatrical release for this. It's going mostly direct to video, uh, but it's uh, Rob Zombie's new movie. Uh, I want to see it. I don't care what you say, Garrett. I want to see it. It's bad. I think you're and I like Rob Zombie. You're probably lying. You're probably just. You're Although just I do, I do want to give whatever Lords of Salem another chance because I remember I thought that movie was bad. Too. Yeah, you didn't like Lords of Salem. Lords of I Salem didn't finish it. David, back me up. Lords of Salem is great. Lords of Salem is a real good like. The tone I didn't finish is great, it, and it's it's that New England like foggy you know fall time a uh, time of year kind of good. Well, I think it's like, because I watched is, it. The with... is great. It's unsettling. It's got um, cool witch shit. Yeah, if you like like Suspiria and Rosemary's Baby, like yeah, he, he made a really good one of those. It's well, like, uh, I think it's because I watched it with my uh, we we watched it. I watched it with my wife, who you know she definitely wouldn't appreciate any of his other movies. Like she probably would have thought like House of a Thousand Corpses and stuff is stupid. I bought or just, the uh, whatever. steel book of, of the Lords of Salem. I think it's great. I would go pair great with this year's The Witch. Yeah, like it's yeah. like two hundred years later or three hundred years later. Kind of, kind of yep. movie. Yeah, the, the where the witch the ends, fucking Lords of Salem begins. I'll give it another shot because I have the means to watch it. It's either on Netflix or somewhere like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm for the unrated version of uh, 31, though, because uh, it's the it, R-rated version that's getting released. I want the unrated the, version. The problem with this movie, and I won't go into spoilers for it, because you're going to watch it, It's it's it feels like really like, why did he even make this movie? Like It just seems like he just wanted to make a movie about, like, it's like he wanted to make a Saw movie, but he went really half-hearted into it. He's like, it, it feels really lazy, is what I'll say about well, it. Well, the one really you've seen again is the R-rated one, so I bet there's probably shit missing from it. Mm. Well, I don't see, I don't see how making it... R-rated and a fucking... Uh, weird. Like, I don't, the, Halloween 2 is a completely different movie. In the unless people are literally like raping each other's corpse or something, I don't see how making it more violent or more swear words would make it better. Like what's what's unchanged? Like I don't. I think I think usually with um, with like unrated cuts of stuff, usually I think because it's the MPAA, I think tends to maybe it's like a numbers thing. Like you have to um, limit yourself on the number of like this things that you say it's... or this things that you show. You have to keep it under. And also like the, with uh, Halloween too, there's like whole like subplots that were cut out of that movie for the. You still gotta watch that. I've said that like ten times on here. I still gotta watch yeah. that. You uh, need to do it. Here's Before here's what's the end weird. Of the month, your goal is to watch. Okay, you okay, but uh, as long as you promise you, by the next podcast you have to watch Ash vs Evil Dead because I want to yeah, talk I'll, about I'll that bad. Up on Ash vs Evil Dead by before the before the last half of the season sucks or something because the first half is yeah. amazing yeah i'll be caught up by next podcast i got it all ready to go on the app and everything so. um well yeah. i was gonna say quick though i don't know what it is about him with with zombie but i think he's regressing as a director like i think he like i, I think house is pretty good house of the of course i like it quite a bit and i think uh Devil's Reject is like maybe Devil's like Reject close to amazing. Maybe horror, it's maybe the greatest horror. It's close to like lightning in a bottle. Like it's like how did he take this kind of sick and like really like like tasteless movie and kind of make it like I don't know. He like almost made art <laughs> with the second movie. Yeah, I don't know why. It's really good. 
And then it is. It, I would even say almost like it's fantastic. It's one of like it is a must watch horror movie. It's like, I would it say it could be schlock, but it's way so elevated. Yeah, so and elevated. like yeah. I would say like it's usually like his second movie in the series. That's like that. It's like I compare him to the director's cut is that or like fucking uh, I think Lords of Salem is that right off the. Well, back. I need to watch it again though because I mean I remember watching Lords of Salem and being really bummed out and and that it wasn't really grabbing me. And Halloween was okay. I mean I liked it. And the second well, one obviously the first I didn't. One is whatever. Obviously, I didn't like the second one, but you guys are telling me the the. Do you all right? Wait, let me ask you this though. Do you think the theatrical cut cut of Halloween Two sucks? Because I did. I think the theatrical cut of Halloween Two was mediocre at best. Okay, that's good to know because I thought the movie was bad. I mean, if you're saying that, yeah, like, the, it, there's stuff that's missing. It doesn't come together. Like it's the stuff that they cut out of that movie that ties. Okay. It, it's, they cut out the glue to that movie, which is like the character relationships. Yeah, I need to watch it. But yeah, I mean, you guys are make you I mean, you guys have made the case. I, I want to watch it, and I want to watch uh, Lords of Salem again. But I can tell you that I don't think Thirty One is a good movie. I didn't finish well, it. We'll see. I mean, but... wait till the. I, we won't be talking about it next week because the unrated version isn't out yet. Okay. So when the unrated version is out, I will uh, take the plunge and I will watch that, and we will talk about it out here. Unless something crazy happens, which you know could happen. Maybe that's what the whole thing of the movie is. Something like really wacky happens in the second half. Yeah. Wait, you haven't finished watching? I didn't finish it. I started it. All right, uh, that's gonna do it for this week, though. Uh, shorter episode, we've yeah. got about an hour. I do wanna, I do wanna plug Moonlight just because I have heard about it, and uh, I think it's worth plugging a little bit. Yeah, just, Moonlight. Is I've heard it's like a shoot. Like if if it if it was based basically just purely on critical consensus, it would be the best picture. That's what I'm hearing. Is that people are saying it's that good? I don't know a thing about it. Sounds really good. Um, it's the well, Wikipedia has the plot, which is like the the most distinct thing I've, I've read about it. Um, is a young black man struggles with his identity while growing up in a tough Miami neighborhood. The coming of age tale takes place over three periods of his life while trying to come out but also stay faithful. Uh, the poster is like you know a, a, a three. It's like it's the same photo of the guy, but it's like split in three with three distinct colors and like he's got a beard in like one of the pictures so it's clearly it's taking place over periods of time he's like younger in the first picture and then older in the right picture um it's got the guy who played Cottonmouth in it it's got Janelle Monae oh, in it nice um yeah and it's it's you know it's it's like uh it's uh made by so it seems like it might be sort of autobiographical because yeah. I believe the right director is a uh, gay black man who possibly grew up in Miami. I don't know, but it seems uh, I'm just like early buzz. It's like early buzz, word of mouth. I've heard it's the best movie of the year. Is what I'm hearing. It's hands down the best movie of the year. Like I don't think I heard about it yesterday, but I've heard about it today, just in the right context too. And it's a twenty four. Like a twenty four came out with the witch. Came out with uh, so many good things. Yeah. Like the skin. Deus Ex. Swiss Army Man. Swiss Army Man. Swiss Army Man. Yeah. Deus Ex. Uh, or Deus Ex Machina. Okay. okay. Sorry. Yeah, so, uh, A24. They both took half of the thing. The same yeah. thing. You know what, Gabe? Go home. <laughs> it should just be a game or a, or no, uh, a book called just X. Yeah. <laughs> Deus Machina. Deus Machina, yeah. Just get rid of the X. That's that's our next thing. That's the name of this podcast now, Deus Machina. Yeah. And we will see you next week because uh, we're done for this time. Farewell. Later. Correct. Okay, we have stopped recording. That was a good rapid fire hour. Yeah, hour. Good. I don't know how long we've actually been. The cast was, but it was a. It was a pretty. I mean, if I was a if I was a listener, I'd be satisfied. Yeah, it was a good hour long hour long show. Because yeah. I can tell you right now, I would. Whoa, echo. I probably won't wouldn't listen to the uh, uh, the political one just because it's, it'd be incomprehensible to someone yeah, who one, can't see the I video. Know. We can we can upload that thing to YouTube, but they're gonna take it down. Probably. Uh, we're just gonna put the audio. Uh, just flip it back. horizontally. Just flip the video horizontally. Yeah. Okay, that's how the scanners the scanner do it, man. Just put Hillary on the right, down on Trump on the left. Or no, that's how they were already. Yeah. Put other way around. around. Just or flip it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go play some more rock band though, so I'm ending the call. Okay. Yeah. See you later. Yeah. Later.
probably stop 